KMR and we are putting together this amazing Billet 13B project. Uh, it's got some very custom Billet ink side plates, uh, lightened rotors by Chip Ursu, and these are low compression Series 6, so 93 to 95 in the US FD3S rotors. We're looking for optimization for long-term boost application. This particular motor will be built using Teflon encapsulated water O-rings and we've applied factory race bearings to the rotors and racing beat three window bearings uh, which are a racing option from racing beat Mazda tricks or from uh, Mazda themselves Mazda speed in regards to the main bearings I love this combination. It does move a lot of volume, but provided the oiling system is ramped up, or in this case, we'll be running a dry sump system. And then some of the advantages to billet ink blocks are obviously they're a modular assembly. So if you ever need to replace a face, you can versus a whole independent side plate or side housing. Um, they can be fixed with center bearings, although in this application, we're running the traditional two bearing setup. And uh, for this application, we were able to even engineer a custom front housing. If you notice, it's got a, a special mount application engineered into it in that front plate. Um, so they're lighter, stronger, and have some engineering advantages depending on your application. Let's get started on this build. Also notable, um, the inserts have been WPC treated as well as bearings, rotors, gears, and basically all moving or friction based components, which we will be talking about as we go on. With our front uh, plate assembled, the inserts in, high Lamard, torqued down. We're now going to drop our stationary gear in. I like to chill the stationary gear. It's not necessary, but uh, just to ensure a great uh, drop-in fitment so we can torque it down. So that front stationary gear went in really nice. Uh, we locked tight it down all of our hardware, and I think it's a great time to assemble the... Uh, the rear gear to rear plate as well, so we'll knock that out. That way all of our side housing, side plates are assembled, finished. Setting up for our rear gear install. Our rear housing, rear plate is all assembled, inserts in, WPC treated insert, Hylomart in, O-rings in. Fully assembled, so now we're just going to drop in our stationary gear. Last step to assembling the plates. And I like to chill down the stationary gear. This is our WPC treated uh, multi hold. So that's a modification for the billet plates. And then the uh, same thing as the front, a three window racing beat uh, main bearing that's been WPC treated and modified so we can run it in one of the uh, late model stationary gears. So now that we've dropped the modified <clears throat> late model rear gear in, uh, we're gonna take our aftermarket hardware lock tight and torque it all down. With our plate flipped over, we're gonna lay in some Hylomar and drop in our Teflon encapsulated O-rings. So we just laid down a nice thin coat of Hylomar. Everything's been cleaned and now we've got our Teflon encapsulated O-rings that we'll be dropping in, which are high temp, high strength, and uh, we actually have a jig we train them on to get the ideal shape, but uh, nowadays these actually come pretty well shaped from the manufacturer. With the Teflon encapsulated O-rings in place and Hylomar evenly distributed, we're now prepping our WPC treated peripheral port rotor housing that was a brand new for Mazda Tricks and completely machined and reworked by Chip Ursu. And we'll be dropping that down onto that front plate. 
With our rotor housing on, we're ready to drop our rotor in. You can see we've got our one piece ceramic two millimeter Ionetti Apex seals and all of our tolerances were set up on the rotor prior to WPC. And then all of our side seal to corner seal tolerances are set up to Mazda racing specifications and everything was WPC treated and we've got that factory race bearing in there. We'll drop it in. And we've got our rotor in. Now we're gonna drop our eccentric shaft in and then our apex seals. With our front rotor in and eccentric shaft in and lubed up, it's now time to drop our Teflon encapsulated O-rings into our center housing, our center plate. And uh, we're gonna use Hylomar and get those positioned in there nicely. With our center plate on, looking good, drop down on there beautifully with everything WPC treated. We're gonna install our Teflon encapsulated O-rings as well as do final preparation on the rotor getting ready to drop those Ionetti seals in, which have already been specced out and measured, and also doing a final cleanup on our WPC treated housing as the billet block goes together so nicely. With the Teflon encapsulated O-rings in, we dropped our rotor housing down on after just a final wipe down with acetone and a little Hylomar on the important sealing areas. Looking fantastic. And we'll be dropping the rotor in and then those Ionetti seals. Go ahead and drop our uh, solid studs or solid dowel pins in which are part of the block's alignment and those are structurally uh, part of the block's uh, integrated strength. And one of the reasons that billet blocks are stronger than OEM is they do have not only the same materials being used between aluminum rotor housings and then aluminum side housings or side plates, depending on what you call them, but they've also gone to a solid uh, dowel pin With all of our titanium studs in and torqued down, we're just going to apply a little bit of assembly lube and we'll drop our Teflon encapsulated O-rings in to the rear housing with a little bit of Hylomar and we'll be dropping that rear plate on. All right, after a little work, We've been able to seal up <clears throat> and torque down the back end of this beautiful billet block. I still have some of my markings indicating I uh, torqued everything down. And now that everything's torqued, you can actually see the shaft is moving beautifully up and down. It's a great sign that everything's aligned. We obviously checked this prior to assembly, but as soon as I get a block uh, torque sequenced down, I like to make sure that the bearing alignment and everything feels true. Very nice. Time to build the front end. With everything looking good, we've got the motor flipped over. The block is completely clamped and our main uh, studs are all in as well as our front gear completely torqued down with the thrust plate roller bearing and spacer already kind of sitting here now we're going to build our front stack so we can check our front end play before we put the front cover on getting towards our final steps 
So after going back and forth between the uh, C, the uh, B, and D shims, trying to optimize our front end play, we ended up landing with a C shim right at two thousandths of an inch of movement. Very happy with that. And it's landing uh, right in the factory middle range of shims, which was often used in the FCs and FD3S motors. So overall, the stack height, uh, everything, alignment, shaft movement looks really nice. Sweet motor. Time to put the front cover on. The oil pump. Dry sump. With our front end play set, I've popped the main pulley back off, uh, dropped our keyway in, and test fit our metal gasket as we get ready to basically put the front cover Mazda Speed dry sump assembly on. And with our front cover on, I dressed the metal gasket with a little FIPG silicone. It's a Toyota factory uh, silicone. And now we're just going to drop all of our hardware down on and carefully torque everything down onto the aluminum front. With our front cover torqued down, uh, main pulley bolt in and torqued down, uh, we were able to drop in our modified racing deep pulley, which accepts. Now we can drop our water pump assembly on. That's a wrap. At this point, we're wrapping up the video and this build. This uh, amazing Billet Ink 13B peripheral port motor is done. And I really appreciate uh, all of the companies that helped make this possible and uh, the customer who. Uh, waited for this great build to be done. I look forward to seeing it out there in use. There is a red motor identical to this. It is a, a two motor build project. And uh, one of the neat things about this, a lot of people have asked is this is an auxiliary mount uh, for aviation application. So if you wanna see uh, this motor running someday, you may have to look up.